everyone, for today's lesson, we are going to learn about the relationship between functions and their inverses. Before you get started with this lesson, you are going to need a straight edge and something to write with. So if you need to pause the video to get yourself a straight edge, then please feel free to pause the video and then restart it once you are ready. Our learning objectives for today are for you to be able to say, I can create a table or a graph of, an in, of the inverse of a function, either given a table or a graph. And I can determine whether two functions are inverses just by analyzing tables and graphs. So what is an inverse relation? What we have here for A and B and C are pairs of tables that actually represent inverse relations. So before I go through this example though, what I wanna do is I want to um, talk about different words whenever, when it comes to inverses. There's a lot of misconceptions and I wanna make sure that I address those misconceptions. Now inverse kind of sounds like the word reverse or going backwards. And in some ways it's kind of like reverse, but it's obviously it's a different word. And so there's gonna be a little bit of a difference. The first word that I wanna make sure that I talk about is the word opposite. A lot of people think that inverses are like opposites, but in math, we always think of opposite as different signs, like a positive and a negative. Those are considered opposites. A lot of times kids think that inverse is like the word reciprocal. But a reciprocal, as we know, is where you flip a fraction. And so therefore inverses are not related to fractions. So now we have the word inverse. They all kind of have like their own connotation, opposite, reciprocal, and inverse. They all kind of, have like inverse sounds like reverse or something that's opposite, but it actually means something a little bit different. So in these examples, once again, I want you to observe them and I want you to tell me what you notice. So really look at them, take a moment. What do you see? Did you notice that the X and Y values are switched? If you didn't, let's go ahead and look at that. Negative two, negative one negative one, negative two, negative one, 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 negative one, zero, three, three, zero, one, five, five, one, two, seven, seven, two. Same exact pattern takes place with the other tables. All of these are considered inverse relations. So what should you notice? You should notice that the X and Y values are switched. So we don't want to say that they're opposites because they're not different signs. And we don't want to say that they're reciprocals of each other because we're not flipping any fractions. Instead with inverse, well, that just means that we're going to switch the X and Y. They flip flop. So it's a little bit different than all of the other words, but they kind of sound the same. So you really want to make sure that you are careful with your language whenever you're in this unit. So an inverse relation interchanges the x and y values of the original relation. So it interchanges them. Now remember that the x values, were, they're what we call the input values or domain values. And our y values, they represent our output values or our range values. So those will come into play a little bit later. So in example number one, what we wanna do is given the table of a function, so both of these are functions, we wanna find the table for the inverse relation. So all we have to do is simply flip flop our X and Y values, interchange them. So instead of negative three, two, we will have two, negative three. Instead of negative one, 12, we'll have 12, negative one. 47, zero. Negative eight, two. 
negative 32, 7. Down here, we're going to do the same exact thing. Instead of 8, 54, we'll have 54, 8. Instead of negative 4, 22, we'll have 22, negative 4. The negative 6, 1, 25, 5, and negative 37, negative 6. So these are all inverse tables or inverses of each other because the x and y values have been interchanged or flip-flopped. So now what we're going to do is given a domain and range of a function, we want to give the domain and range for its inverse. Now just like the x and y values interchange, we're going to interchange the domain and range. They interchange. They're going to flip-flop. So what does that look like? Well, the domain in our original function will now become the range. So our range is going to be from 2 going all the way to infinity. And our range now becomes the domain. That's going to be negative infinity going all the way up to 5. And that 5 is going to be included. For letter B, once again, the domain will become the range. That's going to be negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And the range will become the domain. That is negative 1 to positive 1. Now this domain being from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 and range being from negative 1, 1, this is representative of trig functions. And later on this school year, we will learn about trig functions. Those, that's where you have like y is equal to the sine of x and y is equal to the cosine of x, etc. We're obviously not there yet, but I just wanted to give you a heads up that that's where we are heading. Let's go ahead and move on to the next page. So this next topic is all about how are graphs of inverses or inverse relations related? So here is a table of the graph y, uh, f of x is equal to 3x minus 1. And this graph is what we see right here bolded. The dash line is the line y equals x. And y equals x, well, it's going to come into play in just a second. And what we want to do is we want to graph the inverse relation. So here is the table for f of x. Notice we have x and f of x. So this is our inverse. I'm sorry, excuse me. This is our original table. And what we want to do is we want to come up with the inverse table. So that means that we are simply going to interchange x and f of x. So that means that f of x will go first and then x. So we'll have negative 7, negative 2, negative 4, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 2, 1, and 5, 2. So what I would like you guys to please do is please go ahead and plot these ordered pairs directly on the graph. Be very careful though. This is where you need your straight edge. Cool. I still want you to look at our graph and ask how are they related? We have this dashed line here. What do you notice about these pictures? Still keep that in mind as we go ahead and do the next one. So here is a table of the function f of x is equal to x squared minus 4. And here is its table. This is the original function. As you can see, we have ourselves a very beautiful parabola. And what we want to do now is we want to identify the inverse relation. That's where we're going to interchange f of x and x. So f of x will go first and then x will go on the bottom. So I'm going to have 0, negative 2, negative 3, negative 1, negative 4, 0, negative 3, 1, and 0, 2. And I'm going to go ahead and plot these ordered pairs. Please be careful once again. So 
So what we see here is a parabola that's pointed to the right this time. We once again have that dashed line of y equals x, and there exists a relationship. Now, the dotted line on the graphs above, like I said before, is y equals x. And like I've said the last couple, um, for the last couple of minutes, I'm asking you, what do you notice about the graphs of the inverse relation and the original function in regards to the line y equals x? What do you notice? Well, if you're thinking like rotation or something like a word like that, you're on the right track. This one is not a rotation. Instead, it is a transformation, but that transformation is reflection. This graph, our original function, has been reflected across the line y equals x. Same thing with this parabola. It has been reflected across the line y equals x. And now remembering our information that we learned when we were in geometry, a reflection a perfect reflection means that whenever you reflect a point across um, a line of symmetry, like what we have here, that line of symmetry is a perpendicular bisector of an invisible segment that connects reflected points. So this line, any reflected points on each side, would be the perpendicular, so it would be a right angle, bisector between any reflected points. Same thing with right here. If we are talking about this point right here and this point right here, when you draw a perpendicular going all the way to the line, this each side will end up being equidistant. So it's a reflection and that's what you should notice. And this is going to come into play. So how are the original and inverse relations related to each other? Whenever you graph them, they are reflections of each other. So the graph of a function's inverse is simply a reflection of the original function in the line y equals x. And that's how the graphs are related. So what we're going to do in example number three is given a, we want to graph the given function and its relation. So you might want to use color to color code them or label them. And you might want to make a table to help you. So looking at letter A, this function is a linear function. And we know how to graph linear functions. Our slope is going to be 2 thirds. And our y-intercept is going to be located at 0, 6. So I'm going to plot 0, 6. And from this point, I'm going to rise 2 and run 3. Now, we want to come up with as many points as we can on this graph. So I'm going to go continue by going backwards down two, and backwards three. Now that I have all of the points that I can plot, I'm gonna use my straight edge to draw my linear function. I'm also gonna graph the line y is equal to x. So if you're um, not sure how to graph that, just plot 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and draw a dashed line going through those ordered pairs, going all the way across the grid. I'm also going to identify the ordered pairs for our original function. So our ordered pairs right here are located at negative 6, 2, negative 3, 4, 0, 6, and 3, 8. And this is going to help us to come up with our inverse function. All we're going to do now is flip-flop the x and y values. So I'll make f of x go first and then x. 
So that's going to be 2, negative 6, 4, negative 3, 6, 0, and 8, 3. So now I'm going to plot 2, negative 6. And 4, 3. And 6, 0. And 8, 3. So now that we're, we have graphed our functions, with our inverse being our function that I'm going to highlight in pink, so that's my different one. My first one I have is my original. My second one is the inverse. And as, if you were to draw a, line, a segment connecting these points, the reflected points, you will see that the line y equals x is going to be a perpendicular bisector between the invisible segment between them. On top of that, there's a couple other cool things that happen. First of all, our slope started off being two thirds. Now check up our slope. It's rise three, run two, rise three, run two. The slopes are reciprocals of each other. And also check out the intercepts. The intercept, the y-intercept started off at six zero. The x-intercept now is, I'm sorry, the y-intercept started at zero six. The x-intercept is at six zero. So the intercepts interchange. Which makes sense, and that's because the x values and y values interchanged. So these are just some cool characteristics that I just wanted to bring to your attention when it comes to the inverses of linear functions. Let's go ahead and look at letter B. For letter B, this is a quadratic. And although I've taught you many ways to graph quadratics, I'm going to be looking for the most basic way to graph, and that is going to be just to create a table of values. So I'm going to let x equal, I'm going to have x and f of x, and I'm going to let x equal negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And I'm going to substitute negative 2 directly into this function. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 8 is 0. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 minus 8 is negative 6. 0 squared is 0. 2 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 8 is negative 8. 1 squared is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 8 is negative 6. And look, there you go. There's our symmetry. So now I'm pretty sure that last one is going to be 0, but I'm going to verify. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 8 is 0. So now I'm going to plot these ordered pairs. I have negative 2, 0, negative 1, negative 6, 0, 8, 1, negative 6, and 2, 0. To the very best of my ability, I'm going to draw a smooth curve extending my parabola sides from end to end. And now I'm going to graph the, the reflection line of y equals x. And that reflection line is always a dashed line. And now we're going to come up with the inverse table. So that inverse table is simply where we're going to reverse our x and y values. So f of x will go first, and then our x values will go second. So that's going to be at 0, negative 2, negative 6, negative 1, negative 8, 0, negative 6, 1, and 0, 2. So we're going to go ahead and plot these ordered pairs. Be very careful when you plot these because it's going to feel a little weird.
here is our parabola. And our parabola is now pointing to the other side. And as you can see, these parabolas are reflections of each other, once again, which is exactly what we wanna see, reflections. If you were to pick a point and its reflection point and drop a perpendicular going all the way to the, the line y equals x, you will see that these two segments are congruent to each other and there's a perpendicular that's taking place between the line of symmetry and this invisible segment. The one thing I want you guys to know about inverses, we've called them relations. And that's because inverses are not always functions. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. Remember that in order for something to be a function, it has to pass the vertical line test. So number three, letter A, we had um, this one being a function, the inverse is a function because it would pass the vertical line test. But in letter B, it doesn't pass the vertical line test. So therefore the inverse is not going to be a function. And that is gonna be something that we are going to explore in later lessons. That is the end of today's lesson. If you have any questions over anything I talked about, please feel free to email me. Otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful day.